everybody. Today we're going to learn about the heat equation. So we're still in thermochemistry. Uh, so we're going to focus on the heat equation for today. I'm going to try to make this pretty quick, but there's a lot of math that goes with this heat equation. All right. So you definitely need a fancy Dan calculator. Uh, it can be an expensive one or a cheap one. Doesn't really matter. Some kind of calculator. Uh, you do need your notebook too. Okay. So you do need to jot down what's going on with the heat equation and also uh, the demo example that we are going to look at. We're also going to look through one of the examples on your homework. It's going to be number two. Okay. So make sure that we're writing all this stuff down in our notebook. We're going to come back again uh, soon or after the weekend and revisit this. But all it is is pretty much doing some of the math with the heat equation, math with thermochemistry. And also you'll see a pretty sweet demonstration through some of this. Okay. So please pause the video. Take a minute to write down all of this good stuff, all right? Even the cat. You can even draw the chem cat if you want. But we are going to focus on the heat equation. It's my personal second favorite equation in chemistry. My favorite one deals uh, with gases. We'll get to that much later in the year. Um, but the heat equation is Q equals MC triangle T. I feel like, wait a second, shapes? I thought chemistry only had letters and numbers, not shapes. This stands for delta. It is a, uh, it's a Greek letter, uh, D, it stands for delta. But delta means change. You may have seen it before, maybe not. But either way, triangle stands for change. So all these variables, Q stands for heat. We're going to use the units of joules. The abbreviation is J, J units. M stands for grams, or stands for mass in grams. C is specific heat. Now this is a vocab term. It deals with how well your object transfers heat, kind of the material of the object, or the object's made of. So what I like to use really, uh, really fast is a block of iron. This is the iron from last week's heating curve video and a uh, plush link. So both objects are in the same room. They're at the same temperature because they're in the room. But why does the metal feel cold and why does link feel nice and cozy and warm? It's because they transfer heat at different rates. All right. Metals transfer heat faster. Hence, they will have a lower specific heat. They don't hold on to heat as quickly, while fabrics like cloth, uh, this kind of thing, so Link would have a higher specific heat. So he transfers rate, uh, heat at a lower, slower rate, okay? But they're both at the same temperature, but they feel different because the metal steals heat from your hand faster, Link steals it slower, okay? And you feel the heat transfer. You don't necessarily feel temperature. You feel rate of heat transfer. So, you know, the more you know, that little rainbow star thing. Uh, the units are a derived unit of joules per gram degree Celsius. Don't worry about it. It's just how much heat is needed to change the temperature of a gram of a substance. And then delta T stands for the change in temperature. It's not just temperature, okay? Because heat, like we talked about earlier, basically is how much energy is transferred due to a temperature difference. And so in order for heat to transfer to objects, I mean, there must be a difference in temperature, okay? So the delta T stands for the change in temperature. All changes in life, when we think about them, are just what you have at the end, so the final, minus what you have at the beginning, the initial. You can work with anything in life with changing something. So make sure you got that equation down. Again, you can obviously pause the video. It's the beauty of video, so make sure you pause it. So what we're going to do, let's also pause it right here and jot down this quick demo sentence, or this demo setup, and some of these measurements. So in a demonstration you're going to watch in just in, you know, uh, very soon, I'm going to try to heat up water with a, with a tortilla chip, all right? An El Milagro tortilla chip. They're so good. They're crunchy and delicious. You can even hear the crunch in the video. It's yummy. Um, so the mass of water that's going to be heated is 50 grams. The specific heat value of water is given. Specific heats are usually given to you. There's just a big table of them in your assignment, you'll see. The initial temperature of the water in the flask you're going to see is 22.2 degrees Celsius. And at the end of the video, we're going to write down the final temperature of the water. And I'm going to show it to you in the actual video. All right. 
And so the cool thing about the heat equation is that you can use it to figure out how much energy is in a substance, which is kind of cool. So food, you can do it very easily because you can burn certain foods and that energy from the burning can be used or can be transferred to heat up objects like water or glass or aluminum or something. So let's watch this quick demo. It's pretty fun, I think. Okay, cool, or not cool, hot, I guess. Um, so the final temperature of the water was 85 degrees. All right, so you saw it, I mean, I had the thermometer in front of you. Um, oh, there's a bell. So the chip had a ton of energy inside of it. Like, it was actually surprising to me how well it worked, um, but any kind of chips will work. Uh, peanuts work really well. You've all burned a marshmallow before, that works. So the final temperature of the water was 85.0 degrees Celsius. Okay, so what I want to do is solve for how much heat the water absorbed from the chip. And all I'm going to do is use my MCAT equation. I call it the MCAT equation because it looks like M and a cat. All right, us cats are fun, I guess. Um, so again, take a minute, let's, or pause the video, plug in values into the equation. All right, so underneath this, I'm going to quickly plug in some values, because I'm trying to solve for heat, and from the equation earlier, heat is Q, all right? And I actually have all the other values. That kind of work is good to show. If you want, you can do this, because you could always say, hey, this is 62.8 degrees, which it is. You could always plug that in there for the change in temperature, and that's fine. So no big deal. And so if we're focusing on sig figs for the answer, if we're into that, or if we're in honors chem, we're doing the sig figs, I would round to three significant digits. All right, because we have four sig figs there, we have four there, and we have three in each of the temperatures. So if I do my math, my answer ends up being Q equals 13,100 joules. Now, what does that necessarily mean? Well, it means that the chip must have had at least this many joules of energy in it because the water absorbed it. Where did it all come from? The chip. Okay. So, again, if you eat a chip, you absorb the energy. How do you know how much energy you absorb? Well, it depends on how much energy is in the chip. Energy is conserved, which is very nice. So make sure that if you do them, or when you do the math, you get this answer. Those are for the three sig figs. All right. I want to do one more example with you. If I'm going fast, that's fine. Just pause. Always reach out to your chem instructor if you have any questions on things. We're just mathing today. All right. We're doing some math. But for chemistry, a lot of the math is word problems. So I would love to do number two on the homework. All right, and again, I'm gonna to try to run through it kinda of quickly to save some time on the video. 
But word problems, again, you have to take your time and read what you are trying to solve for. All right, once you figure that out, it's not too bad. It's kind of just like plugging numbers into your equation. So on your homework, I want to do number two together. In this example, uranium has this mass. It absorbs this energy. And we know it changes from temperature from 29 to 79. We're trying to find the specific heat value. Specific heat. Oh, go back to my notes. That is C. A lot of students think specific heat is Q. No, 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 no. Specific heat is the C value. So for this one, what is uranium specific heat value? That is C. So there are many ways you can try to solve for C. What I want to do is try to isolate C in my equation first. And then at the end, plug numbers in to solve for C. So I got my equation. So if I want to algebra it correctly, I divide both sides by M delta T. And the reason that works is uh, fancy schmancy algebra because the masses cancel out and the delta T's cancel out. So you can rewrite your equation as C equals Q divided by the quantity of M times delta T. And you've already done all the division stuff here, so you already have your equation. Now again, if you want to plug numbers into the original equation, be my guest, but again, if you screw up, on all the math, try to change it up, all right? So I recommend, I suggest writing out the equation first here for what you're trying to solve for, then plug numbers into this. But it's still the MCAT equation, we just maneuvered it, all right? If you change your bedroom furniture arrangement, it's still your bedroom, it just looks a little different, it's fine. All right, let's plug some numbers in. But again, if you want, you could just put, Get that in there. There we go. 50 degrees Celsius. No big deal. All right. Cool. And now, again, if we're doing this math, let's see. So we have everything we need 329 joules divided by now 56.8 times 50. My calculator says it's 2840. I'm going to put units to uh, grams degrees Celsius because those are my units there. And now, uh, now we divide. And if we're in honors and we're doing sig figs, we have two sig figs there and two sig figs there. That's the lowest number, so our answer will round to two sig figs. I'm going to bring it over here. C equals 0 0.12, and check out my lovely units. You can also check your notes for the units. The C values in the, uh, in the document at the bottom have all the units in there. Joules per gram degree Celsius. Wham, bam, thank you, sir. <laughs> okay. So, again, I know it's a lot of little things, um, but please take your time on the assignment, I'm trying to end this video pretty quickly. But if you do have problems, if you have issues, if you need help, you need to reach out, okay, especially during remote. I don't know if you have problems unless you reach out. Same with all your teachers, all right? So reach out, it's, uh, it's an asynchronous day. If, you've already, if you already were in class and learned all this stuff already, please reach out still. Hopefully you watched this and maybe got a little more insight onto it or just watch the demo again. Uh, great, thanks for watching everybody, peace.